All right, video number nine, we're gonna build a wire fan in this video. Oh, I don't know what just happened there. My camera just went super, super weird. I guess I'm looking at this direction now. But anyways, a wire fan is uh, what we will use anytime that we are connecting from outside of a box into a box. And it makes a lot more sense by the time that we get through up to video number 12, where I'm gonna build a wiring diagram with the components that we're making so far, it's gonna make a lot of sense why we're doing it. To be honest, this video, until you get that far, makes no sense why you would want to do this. Or maybe it'll make a little bit of sense, but it's probably just not quite um, where you want it to be yet at this point. So let's not worry too much about the how or the why we are doing it this uh, at this point for the wiring fan. Let's actually just build the wiring fan. And then as long as you build it the way that I'm showing you, it's going to work the way that you need it to when we get down to that next section. Muy bien. I hope so. Let's roll into that then. All right, here we are. So we have so far gone through a bunch of, you know, basic stuff. And now we've started to go and create a couple of stencils. We created one stencil for called One Connectables Screws and another one called One Connectables Decora that I have over there. And we created this receptacle over here and we have created these screw heads, right? We had a bond one and a regular one that we can go and drag onto a screen. Cool beans, that's all great. What we're now going to do is we're gonna build this wiring fan that we'll use with these. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start by putting two parallel lines. The reason for the parallel lines is it gives us something to start on and something to go and end on. In fact, you don't necessarily need parallel lines. You could just stick one that's gonna be horizontal and you could stick one that's gonna be vertical. But what you'll note that I'm doing about both of these lines, and it doesn't matter the length yet, is that I'm centering them above this receptacle so they're about the same width as my receptacle itself is going to go and be. And that's because when we're building wiring diagrams later on, we want these things to be scaled so they're gonna be compact. And it'll make sense once again later on. So for now, just do as I say and uh, copy along, and then your diagram will do the same things as mine later on. All right, so I drew two basic lines over here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with my freeform line tool. And the freeform line tool is this crazy tool where you can start to go and create lines and then you can go and adjust those lines, you know, to become anything that you want them to go and become. I'm gonna delete that one because that's a pretty useless one. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw that from here. What we want to do is we wanna create this fan of wires that's gonna look something like this. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna draw one up here and I'm gonna take it over and I'm gonna stop it and drop it on that line. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let go of it, okay? By clicking anywhere else on the gray grid in the background, or you might not have the gray grid, but I do. Um, by the way, if you're looking for the gray grid, you can go to view and you can turn on that. That's a view up top, turn on that. Back to this one over here though. So I drew that first line. I'm now going to go and draw another line down there. And then I'm going to go and draw a third line through the center over there like that. Okay, these are freehand because we want them to look like actual wiring whips that are going to be entering a box. What we will do now is we're going to go and delete this one and we're going to go and delete this one because those were there only to provide us with a place to start that wiring whip itself off with. We will take this set of lines now and we're going to start doing a little bit of formatting to them basically create some uh, corners off of them even though they are already sized to where we want them to be we want them to have some properties that are hidden right now it's a basic line that doesn't show any rounding presets but what i want is i want all three of these to have a rounding preset that's going to be hidden as a background so just by clicking on them and then hitting very small rounding there or the three millimeter rounding uh, they've now got rounding that is a property hidden in the back, okay? We're also gonna go and weight these things out. Uh, we're gonna build just a three wire end. So I'm gonna start by making this my standard weight for a conductor, which is gonna be three point. I like three point conductors. It's just, I've worked with this enough that I know what starts to look good. So three point for a solid conductor. I'm gonna go and take this one over here and I'm gonna make this one a weight of one and a half. Oops, sorry, I clicked on there. I was meant to go up here, make this a weight of one and a half. That's gonna become my bond and I'm going to go and pick a coppery sort of color, okay? Uh, either one of these, I generally err towards the darker one more than anything there, but pick something that's gonna go and show up as being coppery. 
And then this one here, which is going to become my white, I'm going to create that one as four and a half points. It's a little bit larger, but then same as we did in that previous video, we're going to go to the compounding type and we are going to go and make this thing a double compound like that. So it looks like it's a white conductor. Perfect. We're partially there. We're going to grab these ones over here. We're just going to go and group them together at this point. So they're all aligned like that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create some labels for these. I do strongly, strongly, strongly suggest that you put labeling boxes on all of yours because you are going to run into students who uh, are colorblind at times, or you're going to run into really cheap administration wherever you work that says we only print in black and white and all of your pretty pictures are pretty much useless at that point. So put some labels on there. Okay. Just don't be an idiot about it. Do it. I'm going to go and create this box. I'm going to copy this box. So I'm going to go, oops, sorry, I'm going to select it, go control C. And the only reason I'm doing a copy paste is because it's well faster, but it also means that all of my line, all of my boxes are going to be the same. Once again, it doesn't really matter how closely you align them because all we're going to do is we're going to hit that align center, get them all lined up the same. And then we're going to place these labels over top of my lines like that. So I could see that it's coming out of here, flaring off and going to someplace else. Okay, I'll just realign them because I moved one a little bit off. Perfect. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go and take text. Now you could just start typing inside of here, but you'll find out that you know it doesn't always wrap very well. So you could try, change your font and stuff. Sometimes I'll put a different font box itself in, and that's what we're gonna do right now. This is my font box tool, and it's where you can actually select just a size of font. There's no visible box, but you can start typing something. So I'm gonna type out black, for this one, because that's what we're using there for that conductor. And then I'm going to go and resize it. I'm going to take it down to an eight point. Honestly, it doesn't need to be bigger than that. That's going to be visible for pretty much anything that you do. You can take it down till it's, you know, starts to kind of jump around. Usually what I'll do then is I'll take it and put it inside of this box, make it the same size as this box, sometimes even a little bit longer than that box itself, place it in there. And then I'm going to change my font as well. There is one really, really awesome font for drawing. It is called Arial Narrow. Because if you take a look at regular Arial and then take a look at Arial Narrow, what it does is it just skinnies it up and you're gonna be looking for space more than anything off of components. So if I take a look at this, I've got this word written in Arial Narrow right now. And I'll select that word, Control C, Control V, V. I'm just gonna copy paste. I'm gonna go and take this one, place it in there and call that one bare, All right? You don't want to call it ground because it's not always a ground. And then we'll call this one white over there. And at this point, we have got all of these now sized. Last thing that we're going to do is we're going to try and take this thing down as small as possible. So if I take a look at this, I can actually start to shrink it down. Once again, just because we want that space inside of our components, I could shrink it down or I could extend it out if I want it, but I want to shrink it down and make it about as small as I can possibly fit it inside of something. Okay, last thing that we're gonna do now, group that. So select all of them, group the whole thing together, and I'm gonna drop connection points onto the ends of these. Okay, so we're gonna go up here. I'm holding down control, and I'm gonna drop one right there, and drop one right there, I'm gonna drop one right there, and I'm gonna drop one right there. And now we have got our wire end set, We'll go and create a new stencil, some more shapes, my shape, oh, sorry, new stencil metric. We're gonna call this one, one connectables wire ends in a second, but we'll drag that into there. I'm gonna go and call this thing 2C plus bond because it's gonna be really hard for you to read that inside of there. I can't read that. Maybe you can read that. No, you can't read that. Nobody can read that. Just call it 2C plus bond, okay? We'll save that stencil and we'll call this thing one connectables wire ends. Okay. Done. We have now got our wire fan. It's awesome because now we can drag that onto our sheet over here and where it's really going to be awesome is because the ends have got those connection points on there. Check this out. Drag a line over there. Oh, there's a bear. We'll take that down to the bond screw. We'll take this one over here and then we can go back to our pointer tool. Remember this from an earlier video, click once to click onto it, click a second time. Click down until you drill down to just that conductor. Now I'm going to grab my format painter and that grabs, remember how we created that three mil rounding off of there? And that weight, that one just painted the same as that. This one over here, oh, click on it a bunch of times so you it's hard to find the conductor sometimes underneath. Come on. There. 
I'm gonna have to zoom in a bit more probably. Grab that one, find your format painter and oh, undo. That was the wrong one. After all that work, I'll just zoom in on this one here. Perfect, grab that one, format paint, click on that line. Now it's applied the correct uh, rounding, weight and color. And then this one over here, drill down till we get to that conductor. Perfect. Grab it as a format, paint it to that. And now what we have is we have got lines that go directly over to it. We didn't have to go and open up and do a lot of other lines. It honestly gets really, really, really tiresome if you're doing a lot of line drawing. Otherwise, uh, if you can't use that format painter. So having that property of the three mil rounding and the weight and the color already in there makes it way faster for this. That's it.